Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Trust you had a good uh, day. Well, for those of you who are in this part of the world in Asia, well, we have come to the end of the first working day in the in the second week of the new year. And for those of you who are in the US, of course, uh, this is just the beginning of the day. Some of you are still probably in bed, especially in the West Coast. So, but nonetheless, uh, today's show it's about creating digital assets even when no one knows you. You know, I think one of the key things that we get caught up with is that when we first starting out and when we first start creating content here on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube, the question is nobody knows us. So when we put in our content itself, so how do we get people to actually pay attention to us? How do we get people to want to watch our content to, 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 to know and to be able to consume our content? How do we get people to want to pay attention, let alone getting them to, you know, uh, engage with our content? And I think the answer is very, very simple. But before I get into that, what I like to do is to kind of share a story with you and this is a personal story of mine. So, you know, it comes straight from me itself. So the story goes like this. I was a consultant for schools here in Singapore and I started in 2004. And up until 2015, I was actually running a very successful practice. I mean, I was earning six figures um, on an annual basis. And, and it was business was good. I mean, I could literally have my wife stay at home. Um, and, and yeah, we, we were able to enjoy our, uh, our life and, and so on and so forth. Right. So life was good. Um, but afterwards when we had our second child and that was in 2013, I think some of you probably have heard me spoke about this in 2013. That was when I, um, when I went into this thing called PND right postnatal depression and what that happened is that you know you get all this concerned about what are you going to do and blah da, da 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 and and some of them are most of them are not real many of them are actually perceived and and but you know you go into this spiral and because i i at the point in time i lacked that support group and so i kind of fell into pnd now what happened was after that i wanted to I asked myself, can I continue doing this for the rest of my life? Will I be able to continue to earn a living doing this? And what I was really fixated on was what I was doing and which was consulting for schools. And of course the answer was no, because, you know, I was slowly saying that increasingly the demand for that it's, it's dropping. And besides, you know, prices were getting really, really competitive. And so I was really concerned about what's going to happen. Uh, although it still didn't happen, I was still making a comfortable living, but I was anticipating that and that anticipation and the anxiety was simply killing me. And so what I needed to do, you know, I, I know myself, sometimes when we get so comfortable in, in, in a certain setting, um, we get drawn into that situation whereby we just didn't want to do anything else, right? We hope that, we pray, we hope that this would just continue. But the reality is that it's not going to be the case. So what happened was I then decided that I needed to do something and I decided to do something drastic. So what I did was I kind of unplugged my entire family from Singapore and we went away for a year. So we went away and during this time I was on one hand, I was homeschooling, uh, was schooling my, my children. Actually, my wife was the one who was doing it. I usually um, I, I, I claim more credit than I do. So my wife was homeschooling them and we wanted to world school them. So as that's one, one thing. The other thing really was I want to find a way to earn an income on the internet, right? To leverage this thing called the internet, social media, and how can I earn an income? And, and what I didn't know at a point in time was that I thought that the only thing I could do was just to create content, have people consume my content and then sell them something. Right, whether it be an online course or affiliate marketing, whatever the case, you know, you once you have people's attention and people kind of trust you, that's where you are able to sell them something. And so I went on this trajectory and I started creating content because I was reading like copy blogger, I was listening to all the podcasts. And 
one of the key advice that they say was just keep on just just start and just do something put a content at some point in time people will pay attention the truth was that no one paid attention and that was the painful truth because i i went on for three years without any traction at all i tried writing blog posts i tried doing podcasts i tried doing online learning uh, membership social media marketing the works i tried almost everything i wouldn't say i tried everything but i tried almost everything right affiliate marketing the works and nothing works and so that was when i was really really concerned about that i was like hey you know maybe i'm not i'm not i'm not fit for this and 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 you need to understand that you know at my age at 45 i am not actually a native in terms of this digital world i grew up and when i grew up you know computer was 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 for the privileged few and even when i was in university computer didn't come about until much later on and i remember that at a point in time you know you need to go to your computer lab because no one have you know very few people have money to to plong down on a three four five thousand dollar laptop so that was then now so this this whole digital thing didn't come natural to me it just wasn't i'm not a native and it wasn't natural to me and so i had to learn everything from the ground up and so one of the key things i learned in my whole journey itself really the key thing is the following that if you try to learn techniques what you have at the end of the day are just a bunch of techniques what do you really want to learn are the principles behind certain things and once you learn the principle behind that thing then you can look for the best tool that you can lay your hands on and get the tool to work in your favor right so it's not about tactics i mean tactics are important but it's not just about tactic you need to learn the principles and over the years one of the key things that i've learned this key principle is the principle of to be able to earn people's attention and especially in the online world the only way and i dare say the only way the only way you can get people's attention is when you solve their problem if i am not able to solve your problem you would have quit by now you would have stopped watching and gone to something else so a lot of time people think that when they are on youtube they are actually competing with people in the same space that is not the case who you're competing is it you're competing with just about everyone that cute baby that cute cat video you know you're competing with everyone so how do you get so the principle behind that first is you must be able to earn people's attention and to be able to earn people's attention is to solve that problem now once you're able to solve the problem then and only if you get a fighting chance to to earn their attention right so that's point number one point number two when you think about creating digital assets right and, and as i was going on one of the things is that you want to do it in such a way that it's native to that platform so what do i mean by that so as as an example right and we just take this example offline say you go to a you know say i go to my son's birthday you know my son's friend's birthday party and i go there and all i talked about it's my work i mean i tell people about pay-per-click roi videos and all that stuff i think you know people will probably just listen to me because they want to be courteous but other than that people are just going to stop and and people just want to move away right they are not going to be interested because it is a social setting conversely if you go to a networking session a professional networking session and you start talking about you know what you did with your son and it's and it's totally unrelated to work you're just talking about family where you guys go last weekend and and all that stuff i think people are going to find it socially awkward right so the point here is that you need to treat every platform and to be able to respect the platform nuances right so when you're on facebook 
what you talked about when you're on LinkedIn, what you talked about when you're on Instagram, what you talked about. Can it be the same? Of course it can. However, I think there is a way to do it in such a way that it's native to the platform. So one is I, I need to know, I need to be able, in order to get people's attention, I need to solve the problem. That's number one. Number two is I need to understand the context of the platform right and to produce content that is native to that platform itself so that's the second thing now the third thing and i think that's really really important is to understand how the system works right now so and to the point for today's session i want to talk about how to create digital assets that people want to watch even when you're nobody the truth of the matter is we go back to fundamentals and the fundamental is if you're able to earn people's attention by helping them solve a problem, then you will be able to, to, to earn their attention. You get a chance to get a fighting chance to earn their attention. But, but what's more important than that is you need to understand the nuances of the platform. And so once you understand the nuances of the platform, the, what is unique about that platform, you create content accordingly, right? You create content accordingly. And then the third thing that you really, really want to pay attention to when we talked about how you can create, um, you know, digital assets, even how to create digital assets and how to create content that people will pay attention to even when you are nobody, that is where you need to understand the technology behind that. So when I say the technology behind that, you need to understand that gone are the days where you can build an email list and you, and you continue emailing that same list like 10,000 times a day. And at some point in time, they will want to do business with you. It doesn't work as well. I wouldn't dare say that it doesn't work anymore, but I will say that it doesn't work as well as it used to be. So how does it work right now? Well, so this is the experiment I'm conducting. I believe that Facebook and Instagram give preferences to live video. So if you're doing you know, a recorded video and you're uploading to, to Facebook, you are not getting that reach better they're not getting that reach as much as you would if you have done a live video so i'm doing an experiment and 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 in a week's time i would be able to give you the statistics behind that but from what i see right now the statistics seems to be able to validate and prove my hypothesis so my hypothesis is as follows facebook organic reach is dropping right so even if you have a thousand followers Maybe 2% if you're lucky or less will see your content. Now, and that is, you know, a post or a video or a picture. Now, in order to get more people to see you, Facebook wants you to pay. And it's very simple because at the end of the day, if you are, so think of it from the point of view as the, as the consumer. If you go on the Facebook and every day when you fire up the app, it's, you see promotional messages after promotional messages after promotional messages, what are you going to do? You're going to shut down. You're going to say, I'm out of here, right? So, so Facebook needs to rally, you know, Facebook needs to, to, to calibrate that in such a way that you will still find it useful and meaningful to, to go under the app itself. So that's why they're reducing the organic reach of the, of the post for, for pages. However, Facebook prefers it if you do a live video. So, so that's something that needs to be proven, but so far that is my hypothesis. So Facebook prefers you to do a live video. Now, when you do a live video, it gets shown to more people. And because you know every day, if you keep doing it consistently, and so that's a magic word, right? Consistency. So every day when you do it consistently and, you breed in, and you're providing value, Facebook is just going to show it to more and more people. And so it's on the first day, it's going to say, well, you know, um, uh, someone came on and they found this useful. Uh, and, and, and then on the second day, it's going to say that, well, I'm going to show to a little bit more people. And then the third day, more people, more people, more people. So that's my theory, right? And, and, and that remains to be seen. 
so live video and so the the main thing with the live video is that you have to be consistent you don't like doing this like you know once a week or as and when you want to or as and when something happens you want to do this on a consistent basis and of course you want to provide value so your content must be valuable you must be consistent all right and so once that happened it's that you know you build an audience that way so so the people who have watched you in the past and if they are aware that you are going live what they're going to do is they are going to pay attention to you whenever you go live because you have been providing them value and so they're going to pay attention to you so every time that you go live they are going to watch it and because they watch it and they stay on the platform longer facebook likes that okay and because of that facebook is going to show it to more people more people like those people who have watched and 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 if the other people also find it useful then facebook is going to say hey this guy is providing good content and in a way he's doing it well in such a way that people are staying longer on the platform and that's what all social media platforms want to do now with that so then the next part comes in is the following you at this point in time when you keep creating content and doing it on a consistent basis and providing value what you are doing is you are also creating what i call digital assets what are assets remind us again assets are basically something that is able to help you generate business whether it's awareness whether it's sales for you over and over again you need to do it once and once you have that it's going to create that return for you over and over and over again and at some point in time if you do so many at some point in time it's going to give you that compounding effect so the three key things here basically is your content must be valuable second thing is you must be consistent and the third thing is when you do it to a certain threshold it has this compounding effect and what happened is when it has this compounding effect what's going to work for you is the is as follows people are going to go back and they're going to watch your earlier your earlier videos so facebook right facebook has this function that allows you to create a playlist so people were able to go to say you know right now if people go to my playlist on creating digital assets if they are now watching episode four they would then be able to go back and watch episode three two and one right and so when they do that they are getting they're getting to be acquainted with you they are and if you provide value they're gonna say wow you know this guy is good and they're going to tell their friends or they're just going to stay on the platform longer and longer and longer so how does this link to creating digital assets that people want to pay attention to even if you are a nobody here's the thing right here's the thing creating digital assets that people want to pay attention to even if you're nobody number one you create content that is valuable to people. It solves my problem. Number two, you are consistent, right? You are consistent. You show up day after day after day after day. You are consistent. You fix a schedule and you be consistent about it. Number three, once you build it up to a certain level, like, like for me, I have created more than 180 videos on LinkedIn in 2018. And so, when you build build up that much content to a certain extent it has a compounding effect and that compounding effect it's triggered by the fact that when someone discovered your content and if it's useful what they're going to do is they're going to look back at your previous pieces of content and if you make it easy for them to go back to the previous pieces that's even better so a tip for that is in the description of your video you want to put a link to the last video and the last video and the last video so you want to make it such as it's easy for them to go back to the previous videos and when they start discovering that and they start watching all your other content 
And this is where they say, wow, you know, this guy, it's really, really awesome. He really understands my problem. He can, I think, I believe he is able to solve my problem. I am going to reach out to him. So the final piece there is that you cannot just create content and passively wait for people to, to connect with you, right? That was essentially what I did in 2018. I, I was just putting out content and just seeing what works. I was just throwing up a bunch of stuff and seeing what sticks. But right now, what I'm telling you is you need to have a system to get people to do something with you. And that something could be book a consulting, book a strategy call with you, uh, meet you one for one uh, for a for a brainstorming session uh, to do a to do a sales call, to jump on a sales call, whatever the case may be, right? What is your process of securing a, a a customer? And that has to be factored into it. And that's what we're going to be talking about in tomorrow's session, right? In tomorrow's session. So tomorrow's session, we're going to talk about how you can take all this all this um things that you have created and then putting it into into whichever whichever social media and then to be able to leverage that and 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 earn a customer so leaving on facebook and and mark on instagram hi hi how are you uh, thank you for watching. I am so glad you are here. Um, and I certainly, certainly hope that you are getting great value out of this. If you have not seen my other three episodes of the live video, please head on down to my Facebook uh, my Facebook page. And um, I'm gonna, just going to type it here. I'm just going to type it here on um, Instagram. Uh, so you want to go to my Facebook page and look at the rest of the video. The other thing is that is that you know I have a Facebook group which I just started, and that Facebook group it's called Creating Digital Assets, Digital Asset Strategies for Entrepreneurs, right? And and if you have not already joined a group, I want to urge you to consider going into that group because what we're going to do following this is we are going to be talking about strategies of creating digital assets and you definitely want to know the strategies of creating digital assets so why create digital assets you want to go back to episode one and two uh, of the live videos i'll put a link there you want to go back to episode one and two to look at that episode Three, essentially, I talked about the, the strategies, and so this is episode four. So, so let's see if you've got uh, questions for me uh, on, on Instagram, right, uh, Mark and uh, Jin Jin. Uh, if you've got any questions for me, what's the name again? The name of the Facebook group, it's called Digital Assets Strategy for Entrepreneurs. Um, I will send you a, a, a PM, Mark, I'll send you a PM uh, to take a look at that Facebook group. Any other questions you have for me pertaining to, you know, creating digital assets, strategies and all that good stuff? If not, I'm going to call it a, a night um, because there are other things that are coming my way. Um, there's some other work that I have to get to, right? But this is really, really good stuff. Um, make sure you 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 follow me or you like my Facebook page and 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 follow me, right? Uh, because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be doing this uh, series of uh, Facebook Live video, and I, I'm gonna be sharing the statistics with you, uh, what works, what doesn't work. And then, of course, uh, towards the end of this, I am going to invite you to come on the the um, uh, webinar that I'm going to be doing, where we go deep dive into this aspect of creating strategies. So there are three parts to that. Basically, the first part is you want to be you want to not trade time for money, right? You want to you want to do something else because if you're trading time for money, you have a cap. 
you have a cap. You have a limit to how much you can earn, and you have also a limit um, in terms of how much you can charge. So if you're trading time for money, that sucks. And besides, when when you stop working, the money stops. That sucks even more. Right. So the first part really is you do not want to be trading time for money. The second part it's I'm going to be talking about is how to create digital assets. Right. So we're going to go deep dive into talking about creating digital assets. And then the third part is I'm going to be talking about how to leverage and monetize those digital assets. OK, so that will be there will be a webinar that I'm conducting. Uh, and that's going to come uh, later part of this month. Um, the, the date hasn't been fixed yet, but it's likely going to be on the 21st of January, right? The 21st of January. So why I say it likely it's because I want to be able to give sufficient time to do this experiment, to collect sufficient data, so that by the time I come uh, on 21st January, I would have sufficient, at least some data to show you what's working and what's not. Okay, now, um, great, Jinxian, uh, do go watch the other videos uh, on, on Facebook. And to answer Mark's question, how do I stream live simultaneously, right? Simulcast on Facebook and on Instagram. The answer is very simple, a phone and a computer. All right, here, so that's it for you. Uh, that's it for me here. Um, thank you for watching and really, uh, appreciate you taking time to to watch this leave me a comment if you like this give me a thumbs up if you want to be notified whenever i go live or i put up a video make sure you subscribe if you're on youtube all right speak to you soon bye bye